So you just got your orders and you are PCSing to Hawaii. Congratulations. You get to serve your country in paradise, right? That's like a dream come true, especially when I hear soldiers tell me that they haven't been anywhere else before, that their first duty station is Hawaii. I'm like, how the heck did you manage that? Anyway, that's besides the point. Hawaii has over 15 military installations across the state. Oahu is responsible for most of them. So when you're probably looking at your orders, you're probably going, sh uh, sh uh, Sco Schofield? Where the heck is that? Tripler Army Medical Center, I think. I don't know where that is either. Maybe you're going to Hickam. Maybe you're going to the Kaneohe Marine Corps base. You have no idea where any of these are. You don't even know how to say any of these words on the island, right? You're like, what the heck? There's so many letters in this alphabet soup word, but that's okay. In this video, we're actually going to talk about where these bases are at. I'm going to pull up the map. I'm going to pinpoint them on the map for you so that, you know, you can get used to where these bases are, get the proximity, and I'm going to talk about some of the areas around these bases and where maybe the best fit for you and or your family is to live around these bases. And we're going to get after it right now. What's up everybody, my name is Ryan Strong. I'm a real estate agent out here in Hawaii, more specifically on the island of Oahu. If this is your first time to this channel, in this channel we talk about everything Hawaii, eat, sleep, play, live, everything to do to have fun, everything about Hawaii and your military life here in Hawaii. And so if that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, tap that little notification bell so you stay notified every time I post a new video. And if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm for anybody else who may be PCSing here to Hawaii as well. Honestly, I'm getting so many calls and texts and emails from other soldiers who are PCSing to Hawaii and I absolutely love it. I love helping out my military family. And so if you're moving to Hawaii and you need help, you gotta give me a call, you gotta shoot me a text, you gotta send me an email, however you wanna get a hold of me, I got your back when making a move to Hawaii. All right, let's go ahead and get into it and we're gonna start talking about some of the main military installations here on Oahu where you may be getting PCS too. And now this covers every chain or branch of the military. So we are talking about Army, Air Force, Navy, uh, Marine Corps here in this video so that you can basically learn where you are going to be stationed um, here on the island of Oahu and I'm going to pull up a map now and we're going to see where we can start plotting our points and we're going to start talking about some areas. So the first area we're going to talk about is Schofield Barracks. Now Schofield Barracks is pretty centrally located here on Oahu where you're going to have some of the highest elevation on the island and the two towns that, or cities, towns, subsidies, uh, that are closest to Schofield are gonna be Wahiwa and Mililani. Mililani is actually one of the hottest, most sought after areas on the island for several reasons. Um, it does kind of give you more of a mainland feeling, um, living you know, on the mainland um, as far as the area, the style of homes and these types of things, but it, it, it's sought after mainly because of their schools. Um, and it is also, basically governed in a way by one town association. Mililani Town Association has little sub associations in it, but Mililani Town Association overall is one large town association. They keep Mililani nice, neat, clean, um, very well upkept. And uh, you know, they, they keep it tightening up there. A lot of people love it. Uh, my wife actually is born and raised uh, Mililani and she went through the school system in Mililani. Um, and you know, I, I like to say she turned out great. <laughs> so. Another area close by is gonna be Wahiwa. Now, this may not be uh, one of the most sought after areas on the island. You are closer to you know, the North Shore um, and a little bit farther away from like Waikiki, Kapolei, um, but you're centrally located still in the island and you keep pretty close proximity to Schofield Barracks, which you have here on the map. Um, and you have pretty easy access to Haleiwa. Haleiwa is what's considered um, on the North Shore which is gonna be basically that upper triangular portion of the island. And Haleiwa is beautiful. Um, Haleiwa is more of an older style town. And oftentimes, you know, the radio doesn't even work in Haleiwa or cell phone service dies in Haleiwa. Um, it's pretty old school up there, but it's nice. It's very nice. Um, there's a turtle, turtle beach up there. Uh, sorry, it's um, there is a beach up there with turtles. I don't think it's precisely called Turtle Beach. Sorry about that. But there is a beach up there. Um, and I'll pull up a picture right here of me and my youngest um, when the sun was setting and there was turtles taking a nap on the beach. So that is basically where Schofield Barracks is. 
Now, right next to Schofield, well, it's not right next to it, but pretty close to Schofield, you're going to have Wheeler Army Airfield. And essentially the same things go for Wheeler Army Airfield as far as the towns or the subsidies um, in the areas and the proximity to Haleiwa. And really just like when you're centrally located on Oahu, you know, I mean, in Mililani, then or even YPO, um, which is a little bit more south. But when you're centrally located, it's like, okay, nothing, everything is almost, like, almost, almost uh, like the same distance. So Hawaii, we have basically a three highway system, which is H1, 2, and 3, H1, H2, H3. And H1 runs from west to east, east to west. Then you have H2, which kind of breaks off around the Pearl City area and takes you up through central Oahu. And then if you go a little bit farther down on H1, then you have H3, which takes you from right around the Honolulu area up to Kaneohe and Kailua. So that's the highway system, how it breaks down. But when you live centrally located, then uh, it doesn't make everything seem as far. And what I mean by that is if you choose to live out on the west side in Kapolei or Waianae, and you want to do anything in Hawaii Kai or Kaneohe, those drives are going to be a little bit longer for you, especially if we get used to the commute out here and you may not want to make those drives. So that is where Schofield Barracks and Wheeler Army Airfield are located on Oahu. Next up is Hickam Air Force Base. Hickam Air Force Base is like essentially right off of H1. Um, and so from west to east, if you're driving from the west of Kapolei uh, to the east side and you're going to Hickam Air Force Base, you're going to drive past Pearl City and you're going to make it to, um, you know, near the airport. You're going to get near the airport and it's on the east side of Oahu, essentially. That So that middle port, that middle part of the bottom of Oahu where you see the inlet, that is basically the port of Pearl Harbor, the port of where everything really comes in um, to Oahu. And then on the right side where you have a little like, you know, uh, peninsula sticking out. Um, that's where you're gonna have Pearl Harbor and then right near Pearl Harbor I just kind of bounced around but because I was gonna talk about Pearl Harbor next That's where Hickam and Pearl Harbor are located Hickam and Pearl Harbor are pretty close to each other Just as Wheeler Army Airfield and Schofield Barracks are um, which is in central So now you have Hickam Air Force Base and Pearl Harbor uh, joint base Pearl Harbor um, pretty close to each other on that eastern side of Oahu. Just to recap, the first four that we just covered before we move into the next four, we talked about Schofield Barracks, which is an um, army base. We talked about Wheeler Army Airfield, which is near Schofield in centrally located Oahu. We then talked about Hickam Air Force Base, and then we talked about Joint Base Pearl Harbor, most likely where all of my uh, the Navy friends are coming from and are going to be working for the most part. All right, and kicking off number five into the next section is going to be the Kaneohe Marine Corps Base. Obviously, I just said the word Marine. Uh, so this is where all you Marines will most likely be stationed um, and reporting for duty. Kaneohe is, is right next to Kailua. And these are some of the you know two most beautiful areas on the island. Um, you got the Kaneohe Sandbar out there. You got Kailua, which has Lanikai, Kailua Beach. Um, there's tons of hiking, tons of waterfall hikes, uh, just tons of things to do in the area. It is what's on call, like called the windward side of the island. And what we mean by that is because of the way the trade winds come in and they hit Oahu and the islands in general, that is the windward side, especially when the seasons change. Uh, when we get into the winter seasons in the spring, the fall, the winter, the spring, um, you get a lot more gusts of wind out there. You get a lot more rain, especially if you're driving on H3 during the fall and winter. Um, and even this spring was just wacky. This spring was just nuts. It rained for almost three weeks straight. That was crazy. That never happens. That was like an anomaly. But whenever you're taking the H3, so if you're coming down the H1 and you hit the H3, well, almost either way, really, either way you're going on the H3, you're driving through the mountains and the Hirano Tunnel, right? It's good. It's there's going to be rain uh, more often than not going through that tunnel. And that's just the way it is over there because of the mountainous areas um, and the way the trade winds come in and hit. So the Kaneohe Marine Corps base over there, beautiful area, just can't beat it. Um, there's a lot of things to do. And so they got super lucky um, with where they are stationed over there. Okay, the next base we're gonna talk about is Bellows Air Force Base. Now, this is one of the not so common ones or the least, not as common ones, I'll say. Not as common um, bases. But you may, end, if you're in the Air Force, you may end up working over at Bellows. And so Bellows is in between or in uh, Waimanalo. Waimanalo is a little bit more uh, country, um, 
town, a little bit more, you know, local style town, uh, country-ish. It's not more, it's not as modern and made uh, city, I guess, <laughs> uh, like Waikiki would be. Um, but it is basically right there next to, you know, Kailua and Waimanalo is sandwiched in between. Um, and Bellows Air Force Base is again, it's beautiful areas over there, beautiful surfing, beautiful beaches. I mean, you can't, you can't beat those two locations right there. Kaneohe Marine Corps Base and uh, Bellows Air Force Base. There's also a campground out there in Bellows where a lot of people do um, go camping over there. Um, it, I've done it. I did it when I was a kid. I do it. It's fun. Go out there, go camping next to the beach, hear the ocean crashing at night, these types of things. It's awesome. Um, but that is one of the not as common Air Force bases that you may have been stationed at. All right, the next base we're going to talk about is Fort Shafter. Now, Fort Shafter is like the Army Command base. Um, so if you are in an MOS that would station you there, Fort Shafter is going to be located uh, pretty close to town. Um, I would say not too far from Tripler either. Fort Shafter uh, has this, it's, it's kind of hard to pinpoint, um, but it is on the east side of the island. So you're going to be you're going to be around Tripler, you're going to be around Pearl Harbor, you're going to be around Hickam. Um, there's a little bit of a cluster of military installations in sort of this, uh, you know, radius or, you know, of bases. And four shafters over there. Again, one of the not as common, uh, kind of like Bellows, it's one of the not as common bases. But um, it's another army base where you may end up finding yourself uh, reporting for duty. One of the last places we're going to talk about is Tripler Army Medical Center. Tripler is this huge pink hospital on a hill. You can't miss it no matter where you're driving on the southern part of the island coming down H1. You can't miss it. Tripler is this huge pink hospital on a hill um, and it is more eastern located, uh, but you, it's near Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa, Iaea, Red Hill are close to Tripler Army Medical Center. Tripler, obviously, if you're a nurse, if you're in the medical field, um, if you're, you know, you're a doctor, and this is where you may find yourself. Um, you know, being stationed and, and reporting, right, for duty as far as Tripler Army Medical Center goes. Uh, the next closest uh, not military hospital to that would be Kaiser, um, Kaiser Permanente, where one of my kids was born. Uh, my youngest, right, I have two boys. My youngest was born in Kaiser, and you can literally see, you know, Tripler from the windows of, like, the Kaiser uh, the lunch hall. Again, Tripler is a big pink hospital, more eastern located, um, near Red Hill, Mauna Loa, that's, that's essentially where that's going to be. Um, and then, like I said, the areas over there would be Red Hill, uh, Iaea, Salt Lake, um, Mauna Loa. And these are nice areas that you can probably consider living um, and, you know, do your due diligence and do your research. Now, let's say that you didn't, if you didn't want to live in those areas. If you're getting stationed at Pearl Harbor, if you're getting stationed at Hickam, if you're getting stationed at Tripler, Fort Shafter, and you didn't want to live in those areas, right? Maybe you've heard that a lot of military, you know, like to commute um, or they don't mind the commute and they live over in Kapolei and Eva Beach. So depending on that drive, if you're okay with that drive, it's not that bad. So I know a lot of us coming from the mainland, right? We can be used to these nine hour road trips, especially, you know, if we're driving from, from wherever one station to the, uh, and, you know, visit our family in another state, we're fine with that. Six, six hour road trips, nine hour road trips, whatever it might be. Out here, you get so used to everything being so close that now a 45 minute drive is a long drive to you. It happens, trust me. It happens just like the weather. At first you get here, your first winter here, you're gonna be in shorts and it's gonna be nice. And you're like, this is amazing. Like I'm wearing shorts in the winter. I'm wearing shorts in December and January, right? And then you get used to the weather. And then the next winter you're wearing sweats and a hoodie just like I do now and you're chilled, right? You're freezing. Just like the traffic, you can get used to everything being so close and then all of a sudden a 45 minute drive is a long drive. Now I'm not saying Coppola and Eva Beach 2, Tripler or Hickam or Pearl Harbor, you know, or Mililani is a 45 minute drive. It all depends. Hawaii does have a big traffic problem. And if you haven't looked that up yet, it's, it's definitely one of my cons of living here. If you haven't watched that video, you should definitely watch that video. Um, where I talk about the pros and cons of living in Hawaii. Um, there was an incident where we have this, basically this mobile that moves cinder blocks. Um, it creates an extra lane, which is our HOV lane. That mobile broke down. I was leaving Kaneohe. I was going to college in Kaneohe. I was leaving. Um, the mobile broke down. It took me three hours to get home. <laughs> and that was just going from Kaneohe to Kapolei. Ridiculous. Um, in the morning times though, the reason traffic is so bad, because essentially you have 
you know, everybody leaving, you know, outskirts, right, suburbs, heading to one central location and then at, at, at the same time, right? And then in the afternoon, essentially the same thing happens. Everybody spreads, right? Like wildfire. Everybody's like, I got to leave work early so I can beat traffic. Or you're staying at work later uh, because you don't want to sit in traffic. You'd rather do work. So those are things to consider. Now, is it always like that? No. You can leave a little bit earlier or a little bit later and you can avoid it. But I'm just making you aware, right? These are the cold, hard facts that, you know, people, everybody wants to fluff things up. Everybody wants to fluff it up and make it sound like it's just, it's, it's amazing. And it is amazing. But there's not to say that there's nothing wrong with, you know, Hawaii or there's things that couldn't improve, right? And it's okay to say that. It's okay to have those opinions and it's okay to say that. We do live in paradise. I absolutely love it. And I absolutely love helping UPCS to Hawaii. So if you're PCSing to Hawaii and you're looking to buy a house here and make Hawaii your home or maybe using it as an investment strategy for your long-term future because uh, you're not really sure what you're going to do when you get out of the military, then you got to go ahead. You got to shoot me a text. You got to shoot me an email. You got to give me a call. However you want to get a hold of me, please go ahead and get a hold of me and I can help you with that PCS to Hawaii. So before you leave though, please make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm for anybody else who may be PCSing to Hawaii and needs this information. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell so you stay notified every time I post a new video. And thank you for watching this one. I hope that helped you find the base that you will be stationed at. If not, please reach out and I can definitely help you. Thanks again and aloha.